Okay, uh, this is section 3.8. We are solving equations involving absolute value. Homework is section 3.8, page 146, 1 through 59 odd. New vocabulary is absolute value. The schedule for the week will be as follows. Um, on all classes, we're going to cover 3.8 today. On Tuesday, I expect all classes, whether you have me or not, so period two and four, are going to watch the video for 2-9 and do the homework. On Wednesday, period one, three, and five, are going to watch the video on 3-10 and do the homework. Then on Thursday, all classes will take the quiz, 3.5 to 3 10, so there's, I think there's four or five sections, and in class, now I'm going to have you do that as homework, and in class you have to take some form of district diagnostic. Sorry, that should be district. Um, all right, so here we go. Much better. Okay, so today we are covering solving equations involving absolute value, okay? So when we have this symbol right here, this is the symbol for absolute value. The definition of absolute value is distance from zero. So what are the possible answers that I could put inside? What are the possible answers that I could put inside, sorry, that would make that a true statement. So if I have my number line, remember absolute value, here's zero, okay, so absolute value is distance. So what would give me five units from zero? We have two possible answers. The first would be if I have one, two, three, four, five, five, and the second would be Negative five. So you see, it's a measurement of one, two, three, four, five, or it's positive five, or it's one, two, three, four, five, or it's positive five. So really, what I could put, they're both five units. So that means, what could I put in there? I could put this in the, um, positive five right here, or I could put negative five. So x can equal either of those. Okay, write that, pause the recording if you want to write that down. So one more time. What would make that a true statement? If I put a 5 inside of the absolute value and if I put a negative 5. Okay. Now the next problem, think about it. What would I put? There's no solution. Because remember, absolute value is a measurement of distance from 0 right? It's a measurement. And distance can't be negative. So there's no quantity that I could take out my tape measure and measure that would give me a negative 5. This measurement is still a positive 5. So absolute value has to always be equivalent to 5. I mean, it has to be, always be equivalent to something positive. All right, it's so early, you guys. I make so many mistakes when I'm this early. All right, so let's take a minute. I'm going to do the first one. So number one, what would make this a true statement if x equals positive 10 and negative 10? Okay, pause the recording and try the next view on your own. Now let's check our work. x would equal 4 or negative 4, meaning those two numbers could go inside and make that a true statement. Here, x could equal 0. There's no positive or negative zeros. The next one, what would we say? Any measurement that would give us the absolute value would equal negative 5? No, it would be a no solution because absolute value is always a positive measurement. Can't have a negative measurement. There's no such thing. Now, number 5 with the negative on the outside, this is like saying negative 1 
times the absolute value of x equals negative 14. So now there's still two answers that can go in there because afterwards they get multiplied by negative 1. We could still have a negative 14. Negative 1 times, right, negative 14. Well, we know that this becomes a 14, and we've got that negative 1 outside, so that will work. And then also positive 14. Both work. And it doesn't matter if it's a fraction. It'd be negative 3 fourths or positive 3 fourths will be equal to t. All right, let's try an equation. So if I have an equation, I have to account for the idea that this whole quantity could equal a positive or a negative. So we have to set it equal to the positive 15 and the negative 15. So I'm going to ask you to branch it off. And I rewrite the equation as x minus 3. Once I branch, I lose the absolute value. But notice, the only thing I do is I set 1 equal to the positive and 1 equal to the negative. Sorry, that was supposed to be an equal. Okay. Okay. So when we see absolute value, first thing we're going to do is branch it off. Set 1 equal to the positive value of 15 and 1 equal to the negative value of 15. Because we know that this overall quantity has to equal a negative 15 and a positive 15. So we set them equal to both. Okay, and then we solve it using our inverse operations. Plus 3, 3, x equals 18. Plus 3, plus 3, x equals 12. Negative 12. So my solutions, I put them in a solution set, negative 12 comma 18. We don't put them in parentheses because it's a list of solutions. Okay? Now, you can check your work if you substitute negative 12 into the equation. We get negative 15. The absolute value, is this a true statement? I can substitute in, is this a true statement? They both work. So check yourself. All right, as our equations get longer, we have to isolate the, think of your absolute value as your variable. We're gonna isolate the absolute value, then solve. So we have to get the absolute value alone. So the opposite of plus seven would be minus seven. Now, I'm going to split here now that my absolute value is alone. 2x minus 3. Remember, the left side always stays the same, but we take it out of the absolute value. And equals positive 25, and 2x minus 3 equals negative 25. So only the answer is changing, and we're losing the absolute value. The only thing that changed is the negative here. One was positive, right, from our original right here. And... I lost my absolute value. So then we solve using inverse operations. Add 3, divide by 2, x equals 14. Add 3, divide by 2, x equals negative 11. So my solutions are negative 11 and 14. Pause the recording if you need to keep it here. All right. So next to a variable, when a number is next to a variable, that means multiplication. Okay, so to get rid of the multiplication, remember I have to isolate my absolute value, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Yes, I'm doing the inverse operation. And then I have x minus 4 the, inside the absolute value. Don't confuse that. Now we have to branch make it positive, I mean, x minus 4 equals positive 6, and x minus 4 equals negative 6. So again, the only things that are changing are, notice this one is positive, and this one's negative, and I lost the absolute value. We're going to use inverse operations, add 4 to both sides, x equals 10, 
at 4 to both sides, x equals negative 2. And you can check it. You can substitute it back into the original equation or even that second step. Okay. All right, so now I want to know, determine whether each statement is true always, sometimes, or never. So when we have the absolute value of x always equals a positive x, really you're paying attention to the signs. Is this always going to be true? Sometimes, never, or always. Now, you try it with a positive, you try it with a negative, you try it with a zero. So with zero, it works. With a negative two, it works. And with three, positive three, it works. So this would be um, always. So again, just try each one. Pause the recording and see if you can do this with all of these. Now let's check our work. I'm going to try a positive number. Let's say it's 2. Is this a true statement? Negative times 2 is negative 2. Yeah. Let's say it's a negative number. Okay, it works there. The positive number. Let's try it with negative 2. Is that working? No. So we have to say sometimes. It worked once, but not always. Okay. And even with, with zero, it worked, too. Let's try with a positive. Is that a true statement? Yes. Even if I went 10 and 10, yes. Okay, let's try it with a negative. No. So we're going to have to say sometimes. Wait a second. That's a negative, and that's a negative. Oh, because if that's a negative 10, you're right. What did I say? Okay, so if that's a negative 10, and that's a 10, a negative 10, that's still, we, I'm sorry. Okay, we take the absolute value first is 10 times negative 1 is negative 10, so it's equal to. Okay, so with the negative, it works. And then with the positive, we said it worked. Right, because it would be negative 10 is less than 10. And with 0, it's going to work, because it's going to be equal to. 0 is equal to 0, so it's always. Let's try the next one. Let's try negative. Negative 1. Is that a true statement? Nope. What about, let's try positive. Positive 1. No. 0. Nope, because it's less than, so it's never. Okay, now we're going to try it again. So let's try, oh, you got now two times. Let's try, well, x is, let's say when x is positive, 2. Let's say if it's 2, then times negative becomes negative. And if x is 2, it's going to be 2 here. It will be a positive 2. That's true. So let's try with negative 2. Negative, and then if this is negative 2, it becomes positive 2. And if this is negative 2, it's still going to be, yeah, and 0. 0 is less than 0. No, nope. so we're going to say sometimes. So you really have to try. Oh, here's the answer to the last one. All right, sorry. Here's some more. Now try, let's see, determine whether the statement is true or false for all real numbers. Is all, are all absolute values going to be greater than zero? Absolute, absolutely. Oh, except for zero. That's right. Zero was a real number. Sorry, it's so early in the morning. Um, will the absolute value always be greater? I mean, equal to? Not necessarily. Because if it's a negative number, that's a false Okay, negative 2, let's try that, let's try a negative number. So if this is negative 2, it will end up being negative 2, and negative, negative 2, so that really becomes positive, that's how one, that one, pause, false. I'm trying with a negative 2, bigger, greater than or equal to negative 2, which becomes 2, negative 2, 
Okay, we're good. That, that it's equal to. So it works with negative. Does it work with positive? One is greater than, yeah. What about zero? Yep, I think it all, oh, it's true. Okay, the next one is true. Yeah, true. All right, so let's look at some of the problems in the book because they're actually, I think, even easier. So when you get something like the absolute value of negative 8 plus the absolute value of x equals the absolute value of negative 8 plus negative 3. The first thing you have to do is get rid of the absolute value. We can't do anything without it. We can't get it alone because we have to first... So we're going to take the value of it. It's negative 8. No, it's positive 8. When I take the absolute value, I can't take it of the variable. Equals 8 plus, this is also a 3, because remember, absolute value is always, so now I'm going to combine my like terms, subtract the 8, get the absolute value of the variable all alone, and now we have x equals 3. Now if it equals a negative, you say no solution. If it equals a positive, then really, what are the two answers there? To lose the absolute value, you could say plus or minus 3. We can write it like that. All right. That's the same thing as doing x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Plus or minus 3. All right. So that's our lesson for the day.